Welcome to Comment with me, George Galloway, here on Press TV, still the voice of the voiceless. Comment is the big conversation. It can be the great debate, but it could only be either with your support. That's why, above all, I need your telephone calls. 442086014555. That's the number to call. You call us, we'll call you back, establish a clear line, and remember, if you get on the television with me, the volume of your television has to be down at zero. You can SMS the show also, and the best of those will come up here on the comment wall. 447800008066. Or you can email me, ditto, the best also up there on the comment wall at comment at pressTV.co.uk. You can even tweet me at comment underscore press TV. Well, two big questions this evening. The first deals with the horrors of ISIL. Words fail me for the depths of depravity daily being revealed by themselves, about themselves, by the actions of this fanatic, extreme, savage death cult. ISIL, in just the last few days, have crucified people, blown their heads off with explosives around their neck, put them in a metal cage, put them underwater in a swimming pool, and filmed them with underwater cameras as they thrashed about in their death throes as they drowned. Just exactly what the Islamic character of these punishments are, I'm really not able to say. They have hanged young boys of 10 in the last few days for breaking their fast without religious justification. They have crucified others. They have cut the limbs of others. They even, in Syria yesterday, decapitated 12 other fanatic extremists from rival groups, from the so-called moderate fanatics. They put them down on their knees and they cut their heads off, and this on the outskirts of Damascus. But tonight we're concentrating on children. As nine Bradford children, my old constituency of course, appear now to have been kidnapped by their mothers without the knowledge or consent of their fathers and taken not just to a war zone, but to a zone where those children will routinely be brought to watch the hideous, fanatic, savage, heart-eating, head-chopping, limb-amputating savagery of ISIL. In every one of their recent videos, a large collection of children has been gathered to bear witness to the terror that they are meeting out. And those children, of course, as they grow up, will become in danger of being inured to such savagery and recruitable to carry such savagery out themselves. There's a big operation going on, it's very clear, to lure women to the ISIL-controlled territories in Iraq and Syria, to lure them with their children, if possible, all to provide fresh recruits. Children are being married at an obscene age and made to sleep with grown men who regard it as some kind of war bounty. Those children will shortly begin giving birth to children and generations will then be in, uh, in existence who owe their very presence in the uh, captured territory to ISIL. It's a horrific prospect and the number of European and other women and children who are going there is escalating and frightening. But of course it's the children that are already there who are an even bigger problem, a much, much bigger problem. Because those children are being brainwashed, they're being educated now under the control of ISIL. 
their heads are being filled with foul and un-Islamic ideas, and they're being dragooned more and more under a younger and younger age into a kind of death cult. Now, I've been thinking a lot about this question. Maybe some of you don't recall Pol Pot and Cambodia. In the carnage that accompanied the illegal United States bombardment of Cambodia, a group called the Khmer Rouge came to power, led by a mass murderer called Pol Pot. He had similar ideas to ISIS, though he called himself a communist rather than an Islamist. These madmen of the Khmer Rouge massacred two million people in an attempt to go back to the year zero. He killed people because they wore glasses, and those glasses indicated they read books. And the chances were that those books were foreign books rather than books in the Khmer language, and therefore they must be murdered. Intellectuals were murdered. Anyone who didn't agree with the political line, extremist political line of the Khmer Rouge were murdered. They wanted to go back to year zero. Seems to me there are many comparisons with ISIL in that. They seek to take society back to what they imagine to have been a year zero, though in fact it is a nightmarish, frightening, terrifying vision that they have of the society they wish to build. So the answer from my point of view to what motivates ISIL to kidnap children is that they intend to be there into the long term and they are building their year zero society already. The second question is, will gun violence stop the US dictating to the world about their societies? Now, I touched on this last week, but since last week, everything got much, much worse. I was trying on YouTube to follow up some of the gun violence, but I kept getting on to the wrong stories because there have been so many gun stories, police gun stories, criminal gun stories, extremist gun stories, that it's very easy to find yourself in a maze, a maze of nihilistic violence and state violence, which seems to me to be consuming the United States. Now, I feel sorry about that because I have no hatred whatsoever for the United States. My great-grandmother emigrated from the United States to Scotland when millions were going in the other direction. Seems to me she may have got on the wrong boat, but that's what she did. She sailed from New York City to Dundee. Otherwise, I would not be standing here today talking to you. Now, because I don't hate the United States, and especially don't hate the people of the United States, I'm sorry about their problems. But I just wish they would attend to their own problems instead of interfering and dictating to the entire world about how they should run their societies. Now, the United States was founded on slavery and genocide the forcible enslavement of millions of Africans who were dragged in the holds of ships across the seas, many, many of them dying on the way in order to be put to work in the fields of white people as beasts of burden owned by their plantation owners to be used in any way that the plantation owner or any of his agents decided to. And of course, even as that was happening, indeed before that was happening, the United States was being founded on the genocide which almost wiped out in their entirety the original people who lived there. 
treaties, agreements were made and broken by the hundred, if not by the thousands. Whole societies of original Americans were massacred by one means or another, either by social degradation, the introduction of alcohol, or the use of chemical and biological weapons. I'm not making that up. The early settlers handed out blankets, deliberately infected with smallpox and other deadly diseases so that the original Americans would effectively be wiped out without having to waste a bullet upon them. But of course, many, many bullets were wasted upon them and their lives were taken as if they meant nothing at all. The blood of the original Americans was very, very cheap indeed. And the United States problems seem to be growing by the day. The events in Charleston, in Carolina, where in a black Christian church, a young white man, a white supremacist, went in, took their hospitality, sat with them for an hour before murdering them, is just the latest, but will not be the last. Will it teach the United States to look inwards and to solve their own problems, or will they continue trying to reorder the world? That's the question tonight. Mohammed is on the line in Wales. He wants to talk about ISIL and children, and he's always welcome. Mohammed, you're on the air. You, George. How are you, William my friend? Salam. Very good, brother. Good, good. Well, with ISIS, they're kidnapping kids and children. It's just to uh, for carrying on with your comment, what you made. Look at it's this. To brainwash Look at that, Mohammed. Look at so, that. Sorry, George? Look at that picture on the screen now. Yeah. Unbelievable. It's terrible, it is, you know? And it's uh, awful what they're doing to the rest of the w uh, world. What it is, they're trying to brainwash these kids, right, so they can be, become suicide bombers, and also they can um, uh, humiliate the mu um, Muslim Ummah. Uh, they're not called Muslims. Why don't we, they say Islamic State, it should be named as a terrorist state, not Islamic State, right? They have got nothing of Islam, right? that they can offer to the other uh, Muslims, right, okay? Only hatred, right, which is absolutely uh, uh, against Islamic teaching. And uh, they, the, we are not tackling the problem. The problem is Saudi Arabia, right? And uh, they, nobody is listening to, uh, to that. Nobody is saying anything about Saudi Arabia, commenting on to their, uh, what they're doing to their, uh, uh, funding them and promoting their ideology because we are getting cheap oil. Now, if that was Iran doing this, mm. right? No, we'd already be at war. Oh, we'd already God. be at we'd war be there, with we'd them. We'd be there with our bombers. We'd be there with our bombers. Yep. Destroy Iran, right? Yep. Finish them off. But we are not doing anything because we are getting cheap oil. Well, Mohammed, uh, very powerful uh, contribution as always. Thanks for getting the show off to an interesting start. I'm just looking at this, uh, this uh, footage here. You can see these children. These are from amongst the thousands of Iraqi children who have been taken from their parents. And, of course, new children are now being born uh, to slaves, Yazidi and other slaves, who are being taken and used as uh, sexual objects and are no doubt already giving birth to the children of these kind of takfiri fanatics. Other foreigners are arriving with their children uh, almost every day, if not absolutely every day. It is a truly horrific state of affairs, and it's getting worse. After some military gains uh, over the last uh, week, where both the Iraqi and the Syrian armed forces made some gains. We come to the end of the week where that process has begun to be reversed again. In the Syrian city of 
Kobani or Ain al Arab uh, to give it its Arab name. ISIS are this evening driving around murdering people. Literally in jeeps, they're driving around murdering people in a city from which they were driven months ago. They are making advances on the outskirts of Damascus or they would not have been able to decapitate 12 other fanatics from a rival group just yesterday. David is in the UK on the US and gun violence. David, welcome to the show. Hi there. Uh, thanks for having me. Um, I, I wanted to pick up on the point that you made in your introduction when you said it seems like every single week is one of these new yeah. stories, the yeah. most horrific being this massacre in, in Charleston. And I wonder how this situation, this kind of nexus between gun violence and racism, these being two of America's main domestic problems, as you said, should be attended to by the American government rather than uh, events halfway around the world, say in Iran and so on. Uh, I wonder how it will be resolved because you can see, I mean, we've had a long, hot summer of uh, street mobilizations, particularly by disaffected black youths, who I think are, must be enormously frustrated uh, that these sorts of crimes, many of them uh, carried out, of course, not just by right-wing extremists like this, uh, like this individual, but often by the police, and that you know, there's a black man in the White House now, has been for the last, for the better part of two terms of government. And this is a situation that doesn't seem to be getting anywhere near resolved. Um, if anything, the stories are coming out more thick and fast than ever. Partially, I think, just because people now have cameras on their phones and have social media. So every single time that uh, an American police officer guns down a young black man, uh, often for very little or no reason, um, it, it's coming out now. So it seems to me that the, the pressure on the streets in America will force some kind of solution. I don't think that uh, a solution will be forthcoming from the next American government, whether it's Democratic or whether it's Republican. Um, but I, I don't think this generation of young black people uh, are, are willing to put up with this sort of thing very much longer and are willing to put up with the, the hypocrisy that you pointed to. Well, a great call, uh, David. I don't uh, disagree with any of that. You'll notice the difference in the way they arrest black people and the way they arrested even this mass murderer. Uh, that we've just seen on the screen. And uh, he's called a lunatic, of course. If he'd been a Muslim, of course, it would have been an organized terrorist attack and we'd probably be bombing a small country uh, right now. I want to just focus on one of the great points that you made, David, and it's the presence in the White House of a black president. I must say, Barack Obama appears to me a pitiful failure. He is in the last year and a bit of a two-term presidency. Yet he goes on the television and gives talks about these problems as if it was nothing to do with him, as if he can do nothing about it, as if he's just a guy in a saloon bar somewhere giving his opinion. He is the commander-in-chief. He's the chief executive officer of the most powerful country on the earth that the earth has ever known. And yet, it's just a kind of fatalistic shrug, as if he was saying, well, what can I do? I can't do anything. He protests that this is the 14th mass shooting, that he has had to come to the podium and denounce or say how much he regrets, how much his thoughts and prayers are with the, the uh, uh, families of the bereaved families, 14 such massacres in his presidency alone. But what has he done about it? He says there are too many guns in the United States. But what has he done about it? He says these race problems that you're talking about and that I'm talking about are uh, a legacy of America's racist past. But what has he done about it? I'll tell you what he's done about it. Not only nothing, nothing meaningful, but he's, 
dictating to the rest of the world how they should live. He's telling the people of the Ukraine how they should live. He's telling the people of Syria how they should live. He's telling the people of Iran how they should live. Why doesn't he pay attention to his own problems? If I had such problems in my house, I wouldn't be going around ordering other people how to sort the problems in their house. I'd want to make my house such an ideal, such a glistening city on a hill that everyone would want to follow me. Khaled's in Morocco on ISIL. Khaled, welcome to the show. Yes, hello. Go ahead, sir. Yes, hello. Yes, go on. You're on the I, air. Yes, I want to have uh, only uh, how to say it. If you uh, speak about ISIL, it's uh, it's a war what uh, America created Obama and before uh, was Bush, and he must to finish the job. Because if you want peace on the world, you're not killing children or take religions uh, for uh, make war with it, like uh, Islam. Islam is peace. If you talk about uh, Christians, Christians people don't like to see other t people beheading. No, he make this, so he makes the problems, and he must to fix his own problems. If you want peace, you're not going to sell weapons to other countries. You make other children war children. You make from a little child a killing killing yeah. machine. These are child soldiers. These are child soldiers being. Uh, created now, here, right now, in front if, of our if, eyes. If you, if you want to create peace in the world, you must first. You're right, Khaled. Thanks for that call in Morocco. Are you still there, Khaled? Yes, I'm still with you. Um, what's the feeling in Morocco about, uh, the I, people, uh, about the ISIL? The what, people, what, do people people say? In, what do people say on the street? Uh, not only about the streets, you, see, you know the media, the pressure of the media is all over taking the control. The media is taking control of all lies on all over the world, not only in Morocco, even in Europe, even everywhere you go. People want to live in peace, but people don't have the chance to, to give them own solutions of their own words. No, they must to see how other people are going to kill. Also now here in uh, every country, if you go, uh, they're making Islam. The real Islam is peace. The real Islam is not for power. America, me, America and Israel making, how I must say it, uh, they're making uh, for something what isn't uh, right. They're going to make with religions and trying to uh, make war with religions, with Muslim people, with Christian people. What we live years together with Jewish people. It's not today only, it's all over the years they're making this miserable life. It started from the war, war two, from Hitler in Europe. We, the, how much to say it, the people from Africa are coming to Europe. Now Europe saying to the people of Africa, you're not good men. Why? Before, yes, now not anymore. They treating the governments making people like garbage. So if you lo want peace of the world, you're not going to sell weapons. That's the, the first step for peace. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to finish there. Uh, that was a good contribution, Khaled. And uh, one phrase of yours will stick in my mind. The governments are telling the people that they are like garbage. I just saw a young child there firing not a Kalashnikov, but a heavy machine gun, a really heavy machine gun. This Madness is out of control. Nobody is doing anything effectively to stop it. The world is in a helter-skelter towards disaster. We're talking about gun violence in the United States, whether it will, I suppose, instruct the United States to pay attention to their own affairs rather than the affairs of others. And we're talking about ISIL and kidnapping of children. I've got to go for a short news bulletin, very, very short. Stay with us. God willing, I'll be here when you get back for comment.
You're watching Comment with me, George Galloway, here on Press TV, still the voice of the voiceless. We are having a great discussion. We've not yet had an opponent to have a great debate. If you're out there, please call us. We're discussing what motivates ISIL to kidnap children and whether or not the wave of gun crime in the United States will motivate them to pay attention to their own problems rather than seeking to dictate to others. Ali's on the line from New York on the ISIL question. Go ahead, Ali. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. George. It's again a pleasure to talking to you. And you, sir. Uh, you know, I think, uh, I think uh, this uh, uh, ISIS based, whatever is like these terrorists and these criminals, uh, you know, they are just uh, doing their job by uh, by a false propaganda, showing them that they are Muslims. I mean, they are attacking the Muslim peoples and Muslim youth uh, just under the false propaganda that they are the so-called jihadists or whatever. I think this is a shame to call them jihadists, and this is a shame on the, on the, you know, on the, if we call them as a Muslims. Um, why, you know, this is interesting, like why people are actually getting attracted toward them. I think this media has to play a lot, lot role in it. And uh, because, you know, inherently or naturally, uh, if you're a little bit religious, you are actually attracted, uh, attractive toward such kind of, uh, you know, um, uh, themes. So that's, that's one of the re reasons, in, in my view. Uh, and also, you know, uh, chaos in different countries and giving them a false hope of so-called caliphate, which is so, you know, <laughs> I mean, mm. it's hilarious to, to see them as a caliph of Muslims. So I think yeah, I'm just I'm haunted. I'm haunted by the picture we've just seen of the young boy being crucified for uh, uh, breaking his fast without religious justification. Uh, the mm -hmm. dig the mm -hmm. dignity in the young boy's face mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. is so telling uh, by comparison with those who hanged him. Ali, as you're in New York, can I ask you to dilate, if you would? on the issue of gun violence in the U.S. Oh, yes. Is it, yes, causing, sir, is it causing any introspection in the United States at all? Um, unfortunately, Ms., uh, you know, Mr. George, you know, I think we have spoken before as well, uh, you know, when we had, when you had asked this question, why the Americans need guns, you know, and unfortunately, unfortunately, uh, you know, there is on grassroots level, there is not much mobilization um, against this uh, crime which is being committed. Um, and the reason is that, you know, there, as we talked earlier, there are, you know, organizations which are so powerful with all connections to the Congress, which actually would not let anybody do their job. And people are being killed and being, you know, mm. murdered. It seems, that, it seems that, that the United States political process is in the tight grip of lobbies, whether it's the gun lobby or the Zionist lobby, which is mainly a Christian lobby, by the way, not Jewish. Uh, the Zionist lobby means the United States cannot follow a foreign policy in its own interests, and the gun lobby ensures that the United States cannot follow a domestic policy in their own interests. Would that be fair, uh, Ali? I think this is this is a great analysis, sir. And I completely hundred and ten percent agree. And I I I should just admit that, you know, this is the way, you know, you should define um uh, in you know politics in this uh, in this country. Lobby uh, lob know, lobbies lobbies and money control yeah, the United yeah, States political process. I mean not only let, let me just tell you like I think two or three days basement two days Two or three days back, I was reading Mr. Obama's, uh, you know, statement, and he was saying that NRA, which is National Rifle, Rifle Alliance or whatever, I don't know, they actually had a strong impact on Congress to stop, you know, they are to veto these uh, uh, gun control, <laughs> you know, mm. legislation. But, but so, Obama, President Obama hasn't tried to take them on at all when he has nothing to lose. He could have taken on both these lobbies. 
certainly in his second certainly in his second term but he showed no interest in doing so or no courage to do so wouldn't you say I, I guess I would I would say so, but I think his hands have been tied so tightly that <laughs> no, whatever he tries well, to do. Well, you know, I, I'm a politician too, Ali, but hey, nobody can tie my hands. Ali in New York, thanks for the call. Great talking to you again. Let's talk to Julian in the United Kingdom on ISIL and children. Julian, welcome. Hello, George. Hi. Um, just a question uh, for, for me tonight. Yeah. Um, is this an oversimplification? Because every time a mother uh, with a bunch of children heads off to Syria or, or some teenage girls, automatically we're told that they're heading to join the Islamic State. Now, how do we know that? And how do they know that when the region is awash with many different factions? There was Al-Nusra, there's Al-Qaeda, there's ISIS. There was well, there, I agree with that, Julian, but, but in my view, there's no difference between these organizations in the first place. But secondly, ISIL is completely hegemonic now in the uh, west of Iraq and in the uh, areas of Syria, 50% of Syria that they control. So nobody can seriously say that someone who's upping sticks and heading there uh, is not heading for ISIL control uh, because they obviously are. But what kind of mother would take their children into a, a maelstrom of mad violence like that, Julian? A, a very misguided one. Um, another question. Just, um, I heard Jay Shalfata mentioned on the news. Which, yeah. Where did this come from? Is this Jay Shalfata is an Al-Qaeda front, which is now openly being funded by the United States, the United Kingdom, Jordan, Saudi Arabia, right. and some other satrapies. The uh, notion is that this Al-Qaeda group of fanatics are preferable to ISIL oh, and are capable of defeating ISIL. First of all, they're not preferable. They're the same. And secondly, they have no chance of defeating ISIL. As 12 of them found out just yesterday, when their heads were cut off by ISIL. And this is who we're backing. That's it's, who it's we're like backing. The old, now it's, it's open. Like the old woman. Now it's open, it's like Julian. The, we're openly yeah. backing them. Yeah. It's like the old woman who uh, swallowed a spider to catch the fly. And, you know, what a very good, on on what a forever. very good analogy. A Thank very, you, very good analogy. The woman that swallowed the spider to catch a fly and so on and so on. Brilliant. I'll use that, Julian, with your permission. If I can attribute the authorship of it to you, I will. Julian in the UK on what motivates ISIL to kidnap children. In a way, it's obvious. They want to build a new generation of people like them. The shortcut is getting women to bring their children to you. The slightly uh, more difficult uh, task is to seize the children of people who are already there. And thirdly, of course, is to procreate and make their own children, even if the mother of those children is a slave, a captive. Isa is in the UK on the United States and gun violence. Isa, welcome to the show. Thank you, thank you. Uh, uh, I'm just uh, trying to... <laughs> get my head around with this gun violence in America and dictating the world. Yeah. I believe uh, Americans are the big sellers of the guns, so, and they create wars to sell their guns. So I don't think they will, this violence or other violence in America will stop their dictation of other countries. So I, I Yeah, think although, they, Isa, they're, they're, they're even, it turns out from WikiLeaks this week, that they're even spying on the presidents of France, three of them yeah, in a row, so, Chirac, so, Sarkozy, and Hollande, related, all of them, them having their mobile telephones tapped by their ally, the United States. They will not stop interfering in other people's countries, even their friends' countries. Yes, so the, the gun violence in America, whatever type of gun violence, will not 
stop their way of thinking, their way of the, the, mm. the relaxation. Now they mm. have dictating everyone, even the France. President, look at this. You know, look at this, by the way, Isa. Uh, They've killed this uh, man, and now yeah. they're handcuffing a dead man. <laughs> well, that that's, that's to, to show that we are, we are ab abide by the law. I don't know what law they have, but uh, anyway. So they, these two uh, dictation and gun violence, I don't think they will relate to each other anyway. So the America will dictate till till there another power come rise. So well, they, until they people dictate. until people stand up and say, why don't yeah. you mind? Why don't you mind your own the, business? They, the Europeans should stand up, and the Europeans has that power to stand up to America. Says so at least don't spy on us. If we've spy all got the power, Isa, to do that's it. That's fine, you know. We've because all got can, we've all got the power, my friend. If only we had the courage and the wisdom to use that power. ESA in the UK on gun violence in the US and they're dictating to the world simultaneously as their own society falls apart, they're telling other societies how they should be run, spying even on their closest allies. Angela Merkel, a loyal ally of the United States, her personal mobile telephone being listened to by American intelligence agents. Jacques Chirac, Sarkozy, Hollande, all having their mobile telephones listened to by American intelligence agents. The United States pouring money and weapons into Syria in order to bring about regime change there. The American interference in the Ukraine, where they orchestrated and funded the overthrow of the elected president, the burning down of the Ukrainian parliament, and the coming to power of extreme Ukrainian nationalists whose hero, whose founder, was an ally of Adolf Hitler, who massacred 10 million people in the concentration camps and caused the deaths of almost 92 million people in the Second World War, supporting Al-Qaeda with weapons and money, openly, officially, at the same time as telling us we're involved in a war on terror. I mean, this world is almost unfathomable in its double standards and hypocrisy. Rahman is on the line from South Africa, always worth hearing from our friends there. Rahman, welcome to the show. Good luck to you, George, and peace be upon you and, and all you. the right, right thinking people of the world. Thank you, brother. Uh, I, I, I would like to comment on the issue of the Americans. They will never ban weapons in America. Why? Because that is where they qualify to become murderers. <clears throat> they will first start killing each other in their homes, and then they send them out to the rest of the world to go massacre the rest of the world. This is the problem. So that you must never depend on that they will stop uh, arms in, in uh, uh, been selling guns in America. Mm. And the, the second point is, these pagan ISILs, because the, the, the distortion of the Holy Quran, they think when they commit suicide, they're going to get 70 virgins. That means that they think that God promotes prostitution in heaven. They've got no concept what is heaven all about and what is God all about. The understanding of Islam is all cockeyed. The understanding of the Quran is all cockeyed. Most of these Arabs, they don't understand their own book. That's why they commit all this evil in the world in the name of Islam, in the name of the, of the greatest prophet Muhammad sallallahu Very powerful, Rahman, as always. Levi is in Nigeria, staying in Africa. Levi, the floor is yours. Go ahead. Good evening, Mr. George. Good evening, sir. I, I, I want to comment regarding ISIL. Yeah. Now, the fact that ISIL is still existing because they are funded by proxies because they want to make sure people continue fighting, blood continue fl continues to flow, and they continue to sell weapons weapons and make billions and billions of dollars. Billions of, and you, you well, actually, get, they're, uh, Levi, they're giving these weapons to ISIL well, direct, directly some, or indirectly. Some, they're giving it to yes. them for free. Somebody has to pay for them. So the yeah, well, that's a good point, yeah. I think we can guess who's paying for it, can't you? Yes, of course. Qatar, yeah. Saudi Arabia, 
Kuwait and even also problems are some companies in the U.S. and in Britain. So you 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 know it's a corporate thing. Levi, what's happening? Got, what's happening with ISIL in Nigeria? And what happened to those children? Haram. What what what? Yeah, ISIL. Its chapter in Nigeria is called Boko Haram. They have yes. declared Borno to be a part of their so-called caliphate. But what happened to those hundreds of girls that were well, kidnapped? Well, for now, no one knows where they are. They, they claim they have, they have sent those, uh, married them off to their fighters from different countries, and one can't tell. And some of them have been used as human shields, as we hear, to, uh, for, uh, by these Boko Haram fighters, so that whenever the military is trying to take them out, they kill those girls in the process. So many of them are not going to come back. This, the promise of the new like the president, the, the current president, of returning them, I, I, I think it, it, might, it, will be, it will not be fulfilled because this, this, many of these girls have died. Does process. this, new, yeah, this new president, with his military background, do you think he'll do better against ISIL? than the ill-fated and ill-named good luck, Jonathan? Well, I, I, I must say this. He already declared two, about two weeks ago that his age will not let him do much. He's about 72, 73. So uh, he left the military 36 years ago. So he can't just come back and think you can do as you were doing before. I, I doubt that very much. The problems this country has, Nigeria has, did not start today. It started even before independence. And greed and corruption has refused our leaders to tackle all these challenges head on. They only have their, their pockets and sending our country's wealth to foreign banks abroad. Yes, I'm sorry to say that's absolutely true. Nigeria should be an extremely wealthy superpower in the world. Yes. Uh, but it is uh, very far from either. Levi, thanks for that call in Nigeria. A much clearer line than we often find ourselves with from Nigeria. I know we have a huge number of viewers in Nigeria and indeed throughout Africa. So my salute to you all. Keep trying to get through to the show. Uh, and uh, if all the lines are clear like uh, Levi's, then we'll hear more from uh, Africa. Charleston uh, has banned protests against the terror attack in the church. You really couldn't make that up. Martial law, I think they call that, in other countries, where the democratic freedom uh, to assemble, which is guaranteed in the US Constitution, can be suspended on a whim. We're told that we can't clear up the gun problem in the United States because the Constitution gives the people the right to bear arms. Well, it also gives them the right to free speech and free assembly. But they don't have that in Charleston this evening, where people who want to protest about the racism and the gun violence in their own country are forbidden uh, to do so. And look at that. New Jersey, Detroit, Philadelphia. This man shot dead, his brains blown out, and then they put handcuffs on him as an earlier caller said, just to show that they are obeying the law. We're talking uh, about the United States, the wave, tsunami actually, of killings, mass killings, sprees, police killings. <coughs> Almost always, the victims are black. And most of the time, the perpetrators are not. And we're talking about ISIL, who plumbed new depths this week and videotaped themselves doing it and released those tapes. They must think it's a good look, this poor child being crucified. Actually, this child's beatific dignity on that cross, to me, speaks volumes. I will ne never be able to forget this picture. This boy represents the dignity of human beings, whilst those who hanged him, a boy who hanged him, will surely perish forever in the hell fires. 
Surely, how can they imagine that these punishments that they are meeting out and taping and releasing can be viewed with favor by God? How can they imagine it? The stealing of other people's children. All these children have been taken from their parents and taken to what is a boy soldier base where they're taught how to use heavy machine guns, where they're brought to witness horrific, evil punishments. They are being brainwashed in the horrific interpretation of Islam being perpetrated by the so-called caliph and his followers. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, of course, forbade people joining battles without their mother's consent. These children did not come with any mother's consent. They're just rounded up and taken away. Look at the age of these children with their weapons. And we saw some footage earlier of heavy machine guns being fired by small children. It reminds me of some of the footage of the last days of Adolf Hitler, when he was rounding up children in the so-called Hitler Youth and giving them weapons and sending them out to fight the advancing Soviet and Allied armies. As I said earlier, this whole story increasingly resembles the Khmer Rouge, Pol Pot, the killing fields, and the genocide of Cambodia. But here's a postscript that you might find interesting. Because the Khmer Rouge was removed by the heroic armed forces of the People's Republic of Vietnam, with whom the United States had long had a bit of a beef, the United States and Britain continued to recognize Pol Pot and his genocidal murderers at the United Nations for years afterwards. I'm not making that up. Mrs. Thatcher's minister used to vote annually at the United Nations to keep Pol Pot in his chair in the United Nations. Years after we saw the killing fields and the mountain of skulls and corpses. It's been marvelous for me. I hope it was for you. Continue on Twitter. Comment underscore press TV. Okay, so I'm going to come back to this. Okay, then, to make sure it's a little bit important.